Hi, my name is Ram, and in this video we're going to set up PETAL stack application. PETAL stands for Phoenix, Elixir, Tailwind CSS, Alpine JS, I think, and Live View. So, but basically we have the Phoenix Elixir stack with the Alpine and Tailwind CSS set up inside of it. That's one of my favorite stacks nowadays. And uh, that's going to be the stack that we're going to use, this boilerplate stuff. We're going to use later in all the episodes connected to this stack of technology. And a uh, very important thing that we need to note is that we're using Phoenix 1.6. And that's important because in this version, the way that Phoenix handles the assets quite different. It's changed quite a bit. So instead of using the Webpack, now it uses the ES build. So that's very important. Pay attention to what version you use and let's get down to it. So of course, the first thing that you need to do is install everything that you need. You need to install Elixir, you need to install Phoenix Framework, all of this stuff, and you can just follow the documentation to do that. We're not gonna do that with you. We're gonna jump right into the terminal and start our application. So we generate application with mixphx new and we call it Petal. Okay, and we're gonna install all the dependencies right away. Okay, it's done. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is, of course, to initialize the repository, etc. But we're going to uh, do it very in very nerdy stuff. We're going to use tmux and neovim for that. There is no reason you need to do that, but it's just kind of fun. So we're going to cd into this pedal st uh, stack and we're going to open the nvim. And here I'm just run the lazy git. So the first thing that I want to do is, of course, create new repository. Yeah, I want to create new repository. Then I want to add everything here and then commit with initial commit. How cool is that, right? Wow, it's just, it just wow. Of course, you can do everything just in your terminal. You do the git init first, then you do the git add everything, and then you have the commit uh, dash m with the message. So, cool, we've done that. Let's return back to our new vim. So the first thing that we wanna do is we go into the dev, uh, config slash dev file, and here, I want to change the credentials for the database. So I'm using dev dev in my local PostgreSQL database. So you can use anything that you want um, that you use on your machine. So after that, we can just run command a mix acto create to create the database, but I already have it created. Yeah, it's already been created. So nothing uh, good for me. So the next thing that we want to do, so if we go to the uh, file browser, you will see this folder assets. And that's where uh, Phoenix handles all the assets inside of this folder. So inside of this folder, we're gonna, use, we're gonna work with NPM as well. And that's why I prefer to create another tab in your terminal, or in this particular case, I'm gonna use uh, another window um, that I'm gonna just rename right away to the assets, because I'm gonna do here in Petal assets folder. So this way I'm running my commands right here um, because very often I just run npm commands from the root of the project and it's very infuriating sometimes. So here I'm going to use npm init uh, dash y just to create the package JSON file and inside of it let's install with Scythe uh, Alpine.js and of course we can also install, needs to install the Tailwind CSS Tailwind CSS, but also the um, packages and tools that we're going to use to actually compile our Tailwind stuff to the CSS. And for that, we're going to use auto prefixer and post CSS, and also post CSS import plugin. Let's install it, and we're done. Cool. So let's start with the Tailwind CSS setup. We're going to use the post CSS to compile our Tailwind. And we're gonna use awesome just-in-time compiler mode as well. So, but to do that, we need to generate two files. We need to generate Tailwind config and post-css config. And of course you can do that just manually, but why if you can do it automatically? With npx tailwind CSS, uh, tailwind CSS command in it, and if you run it like this, it will create only the tailwind config file, but if you add the flag post-css, it will create both of these files. Perfect. So now let's go to editor and let's open, let's start with post-css. It's already have the tailwind and auto prefix included, but we also use post-css imports. So let's add it here, post-css import uh, plugin, like this, save it, and we're done. Next, let's go to the tailwind, CS, uh, tailwind config JavaScript file. 
And here we'll add the JIT mode here, just in time compiler. And for JIT mode to work, we need to specify the purge files as well. So this way, um, application knows where to search for this Tailwind CSS classes that, that it can include into the final CSS. So in Phoenix application, we have everything in lib folder under the web folder. And there, I just want to find any file that has the EX extension. Another path that you want to include here, and a lot of people do, is JavaScript. Because sometimes in JavaScript, you can man manipulate DOM and maybe add some Tailwind classes. So we just want, just to be safe, to include everything inside of here as well in JavaScript files. And that's it. That's all that we need to do. So that's the setup, but that's not all that we need to do. The last step in this chain, so we installed everything, we created post-CSS and Tailwind CSS, uh, post -CSS config and Tailwind config files. And the last thing that we need to do is go to app CSS file. And instead of this importing this Phoenix, we're gonna import Tailwind CSS base, as well as a couple of others, component, components, and util uh, utilities. And that just comes right from the documentation. Nothing weird here. But another thing that you need to do, you need to go to app.js file and you do not need to import this file anymore because it will be handled by post-CSS, not by the Phoenix ES build system. So we just remove it from here like that. Okay, so all the configuration is done, but if we run it now, nothing, uh, nothing changed. So let, let's just create new folder here and we're gonna run a phx server just to see how it looks now. So if you go to the browser and refresh it, you can see there are no styling at all. So we do not have any kind of Tailwind CSS yet. And of course we don't because we just set up a couple of files, but ne we never did anything with them. And you can even see that we do not have assets app CSS. It's never been generated. Cool. So we need to generate it. And to do that, we need to go to the dev uh, dev ex so config dev exs file and go to the bottom here not to the bottom right here config petal and here we have the watchers and you can see here the es built watcher that's the watcher that builds the assets by default and here we're just going to add our own one which is going to be very simple so there's going to be mpx and we specify the command to generate our css and this command will be tailwind css but we need to provide several options to it. The first one, of course, is the input. So the input is gonna be CSS, app.css. Then, of course, we need to provide the output. Output, if I learn how to type correctly. And that's gonna be prev, static, assets, app.css. That's the location of the app.css file by default. Uh, of course, you can change it, all the built assets are stored inside of brief static. And then you have your assets. And if you go to the root, oops, if you go to the root uh, .html file, you will see here that we use the assets app CSS, and then for the JavaScript assets app.js. So that's where um, Phoenix application expects files to be. So that's done. But then we need to also specify that we're using post CSS. And in development, we actually want to watch for changes like this. You can see here that we're using some kind of relative paths. So we need to specify where we want this command to be executed. And we do it with the path expand. Path expand. And let's say that from the current directory, we're going to go up to the assets folder. So this way we basically execute this command inside of the assets folder. So we run npm. There in the assets we have, if you go here, you can see that we have our app CSS file. And then we just put it up one folder into prev static assets right here. Cool. So let's save it. And let's rerun our server and see how it goes. I think now it does not actually it's not complaining about uh, app CSS. And if you go to the browser and refresh, you will see that now we have Tailwind CSS. Another cool thing is if we go back, let's go to the uh, to editor and open app CSS, but not here.
because it's ignored by Git, we're going to go to here and uh, let's refresh it. Here in essence, we have AppCSS and if we open it up, you will see that it's all, only 700 lines long. So it just used the things that we use inside of our application. And to be honest, there are none. So uh, here is the alerts and here's the content. So there, there's nothing that we actually used uh, for now, but let's open index.html file and let's add, for example, here class text center like this. Now we actually rebuild everything. And if we go back right here, you can see that it appeared magically. That's just in time compiler. That's the beauty of it. How cool is that, right? So all the file, all the classes that we actually use will be compiled and added into the uh, final um, CSS file. Cool. So that's that's all for uh, Tailwind CSS. Now let's go with Alpine. Alpine GS is much easier to set up. So we're going to App GS, and here let's import the Alpine uh, from Alpine GS. And then we need to do two things. First, we need to set Alpine on the window. And then we need to initialize it with alpine.start. And that will work on the Alpine version 3. With, with Alpine version 2, it was quite different. And that's all. That's all that we need to do. And it should work. So let's test it out. So let's go back to index.html stuff. We select everything and we're going to get rid of it. And let's create this section with the class, let's say, tax blue 500 and text center like this. And inside of it, we're going to test the actual um, Alpine stuff. So we're going to have the P tag. And if nothing works, we have the doesn't work. So if Alpine doesn't work, we just render this message here. But if Alpine works, we actually want to replace this text with message, some kind of message. And this message we're going to set up right here in the same place with data. And we're going to say the message is going to be hello. It works because everybody likes when like be shouted from the screen. So now if you go back, hello, it works. Cool. So if I reload, perfect. So Alpine JS works and Tailwind CSS works as well, but that's not it. So it works in development, but it's, it will be completely ignored in the production. So to make it work in the production, uh, let's go to the mix EXS file. And here at the bottom of the file, we have the aliases and we have the aliases like assets deploy. And that's basically a chain of commands that will be run when we build our project for deployment. So we have the as built and we have PHX digest and we want to add our own. And basically oops, what we want to do here is to run the command from the assets folder. Remember, everything happens in assets. So we cd into assets and then we run npm, npm run uh, deploy. That's it. So we do not have this command yet, of course, but we're going to create it in a second. And also in setup, we also want to run commands from the um, from the assets. And this command will be npm install like this. So now we need to create this deploy command. So let's go to the package.json. And here, instead of test, we're going to have the deploy. And inside of here, we're going to run basically the same command that we run in the development. Um, but we need to set up the node uh, environment to be production. And then we run Tailwind CSS with the flag post CSS, because we're using post CSS, with a flag minify, so we minify the actual result, and then the same thing, the input is going to be CSS app.css, and the output will be uh, prev as a static assets uh, app.css. And that's it. So this command will be run when we uh, run the build, and uh, yeah, and we're going to have our resulting CSS file. Okay, so let's let's commit our change, and I'm just gonna use lazy git here. I add everything, and we can commit spital stack setup like this. Cool, and we're done. 
Okay, that's it. So now we've got the pedal stack set up and we're gonna use this at the starting point for, for all other things that we're gonna develop uh, using this technology. So I hope you liked it. Thank you very much for your time and see you in the next one.